Today, we're in Newberry Springs, California, right off of historic Route 66, and we're standing on the legendary Mrs. Orcutt's driveway, the fastest driveway in the world. Now, I love crazy roadside history stories, and let me tell you, this story gets pretty crazy. So we'll talk about how this driveway became legendary, why it's the fastest driveway in the world, and what a character Mrs. Orcutt was. Definitely a Route 66 legend that doesn't quite get the attention she deserves. So come along while we explore Mrs. Orcutt's driveway. Right now we're standing on historic Route 66, right about the place where Mrs. Orcutt's driveway originally linked up with Route 66. Now what makes this an incredible and crazy story is Mrs. Orcutt's house is off in the distance over there, or was off in the distance over there. And so when they built Interstate 40 in the 1960s, it cuts right through where her driveway is. And so her house was gonna be cut off from Route 66. Mrs. Orcutt was not happy about this whatsoever, and she complained. And as a matter of fact, she even wrote a letter to President Johnson and Lady Bird Johnson, for whatever reason, complaining about the interstate cutting off her driveway. So the government offered her a bunch of money, and I'm talking equivalent to about $900,000 in money to purchase her house, which even today, $900,000 can get you uh, quite, a, quite a decent house. Well, maybe not so much anymore, but you can still get something for $900,000. Well, she was not accepting that. She did not want the interstate cutting her off from Route 66. So she complained. She complained to the President of the United States and Eventually, they decided, okay, we have to come to a solution here. So it was decided that they would either have to build her an on-ramp to Interstate 40, so an on-ramp for just one house, or connect her house to an existing on-ramp, which the nearest one is about four miles away. So that's what they decided to do. They decided to connect her house to an existing on-ramp about four miles away at a cost of about two million dollars in 1960s dollars. And so let's go check out the driveway and we haven't even got to the crazy part yet. Well, and I'll explain how this story gets even crazier once we get to Mrs. Orcutt's legendary driveway. Here we are on Mrs. Orcutt's driveway. A four mile stretch of road that goes from where Mrs. Orcutt's property was all the way to the nearest on-ramp to Interstate 40. Now we'll get to how this story gets even crazier in just a minute, but first I wanted to talk about Mrs. Orcutt herself because she was quite the character. Her name was Bonnie Margaret Orcutt and her husband died in a plane accident in the 1950s and then she bought property out here. Now she built a house, she built a lake with an island on it and I'm hoping that we get to explore her property. I'm not sure if we can access it or if there's anything that's still there, but we're gonna take a look in just a few moments at hopefully Mrs. Orcutt's property. But getting back to her, she had her property declared a wildlife sanctuary. And then some years later, she wanted to build a racetrack and have auto races on her property. And it was brought up to her. Hey, wait a second, you had your property declared a wildlife sanctuary. How does having auto races and a racetrack gel with it being a wildlife sanctuary and she explained well the auto races are gonna be on Saturdays and the wildlife doesn't come around on Saturdays so you know they approved it they uh, let her build her racetrack out there and I guess that uh, was a convincing enough argument uh, for whoever had to give her the permit to uh, build the racetrack but to make even matters crazier the town of Newberry Springs was once called Newberry, but she thought Newberry Springs was a better name than Newberry. So she went around and had people sign a petition to change the name. And instead of giving it to the town council or the mayor or whoever was in charge of the town, she took it on herself. She sent it to the Postmaster General of the United States and got the name of the town changed without anyone in the town knowing about it. So one day, 
they found out that their town was now Newberry Springs and they had to update all their mail, change all their business addresses. People weren't exactly pleased about the whole thing, but it was just another thing that Mrs. Orca did. And I did a newspapers.com search looking for information on Mrs. Orca and her name comes up quite a bit on anything having to do with uh, Newberry or Newberry Springs in the 1960s and 1970s. She was definitely very active in Newberry Springs. But now to get to how this story gets even crazier than just the fact that the government had to build Mrs. Orcutt this driveway. So sometime in the early 1970s, someone from Car and Driver magazine found this road and they thought, wait a second, this is a well-maintained, flat, perfectly straight road out in the middle of nowhere with no traffic and no highway patrol we could speed test vehicles on that road. And so that's what they started doing, even breaking 200 miles per hour on Mrs. Orcutt's driveway. Now, Mrs. Orcutt was not pleased with this, and there's stories of her chasing off the people from Car and Driver magazine with a shotgun, but still they kept coming. And in the 1970s and 1980s, this road actually appears on the cover of a number of issues of Car and Driver and other car magazines of the time. And this road started to become pretty well known for being able to go really fast on it. We've made it to the edge of Mrs. Orcutt's property. Now, Mrs. Orcutt died in 1986, and with her death and the abandonment of her property, there was no longer any reason to keep up maintenance on the road, so it started to fall into disrepair. And with the condition it's in now, you're not going to be breaking any land speed records on it. I mean, if you try to hit 200 miles per hour on this road, you're probably not going to live to tell the tale. So Car and Driver magazine stopped using Mrs. Orcutt's driveway to test their vehicles, and the road has just fallen into disuse. It's a road out in the middle of the desert. There is absolutely nothing on it, except for maybe the ruins of Mrs. Orcutt's property. Let's go find out. So we've made it to what remains of Mrs. Orcutt's property. If you look at the property from a satellite view through like Google Maps or something, you could see where the lake was. We'll go take a look and see if we can see it from the ground level and we'll take a look inside what remains of uh, one of Mrs. Orcutt's buildings here. So here is Mrs. Orcutt's lake. There was supposedly an island in the middle of it where she kept chickens and everything on the island. I don't see any island now, but then again, I don't see a lake either, it's just a dry hole in the ground now, but here's where Mrs. Orcutt's lake was. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe this is Mrs. Orcutt's doghouse. Now let's take a look inside this building. Now I believe this might have been Mrs. Orcutt's residence. I read she had her house built on the side of the lake. We are right next to the lake, so let's take a look inside. And I'm always a little nervous going into an abandoned building like this out in the middle of nowhere. You don't know what you're gonna find inside. Hopefully we don't really find anything, but uh, let's take a look around. So the shower here is still pretty recognizable. And it looks like this is probably where the toilet was. Based on the tile on the floor in this area, this was probably the kitchen.
Now I read somewhere that she had shotgun turrets built into the side of her house. And I didn't know if I should believe that or not, but I'm not sure what this is right here. And there's a couple other holes all around the uh, building. Uh, but maybe the shotgun turret thing was true after all. Here's where Mrs. Orcutt's clothesline would have been. If we would have come by here 50 years ago, there would probably be some clothes hanging here right now. I love stories like the story of Mrs. Orcutt's driveway because often when you come across an abandoned road in the middle of nowhere, you don't know the story behind that road. I mean, you could see Mrs. Orcutt's driveway while driving down Interstate 40, but when you're driving by, you don't know that that driveway was built with $2 million of taxpayer money because a little old lady wrote a letter to the President of the United States or that that road had been featured on the cover of Car and Driver magazine a number of times or that somebody broke 200 miles per hour on that driveway. I mean, stories like that are so fun and it's so fun to learn about when you're traveling Route 66. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.